Hello everyone and welcome to Ocean Cadence. Today we will be undertaking the starting air system commonly found on board for the starting procedure of the main engine. Before we take up how it works, let's focus on the essential components of that comprise the starting air system. The main air compressors that are responsible for generating the 30 bar compressed air the receivers that are responsible for storing the 30 bar compressed air the interlock mechanism which decides whether the air is allowed to pass further in the system or not for the actual starting of the engine the distributor system which decides that which particular unit the starting air is to be admitted into to give the correct kick to the engine so that the engine starts and starts as well in the correct direction. The manifold which is like a sub storage system for the air in the line in bulk quantity to be ready to be provided at any point of time to the starting air wall for being admitted into the unit and the starting air wall which is the mechanism that operates when the 30 bar air is to be admitted into the unit for giving the kick to the engine. So let us now see as to how the system works. The main air compressors either one or being used in tandem generate the highly compressed 30 bar air that is further being sent down for being stored into the receivers. Each air compressor has a particular wall dedicated to make sure that in case of an emergency one can be isolated from the line and from the other as well. The receivers have a filling wall as well as a discharge wall. These receivers at any given point of time should have enough air to provide start kicks to the starting air wall. The regulation for the amount or the quantity of air would be covered under the safety topics. This 30 bar air then proceeds further as you can see into the network and either with the help of a remote start signal or a local start signal can be admitted further into the line. From here before the air proceeds further it has to be made sure that the turning air interlock has been actively removed that means the turning air is no further in place so as to ensure that the engine is ready to be started on air and then further on fuel. Once the interlock has been removed, the air upon the start signal then proceeds further and now bifurcates into two halves. One part of the air is towards the auto wall as you can see in this network. Now the function of the auto wall is that before allowing the air to go into the manifold system this is our mainstay the auto valve at all points of time during maneuvering as well as the main engine running condition should be in open condition that is why this network from here through the non-return valve arrangement further the air then passes into the manifold and awaits filling up the line further up to the starting air wall. Now to decide which unit the kick has to be given is the responsibility of the distributor. The air, the 30 bar air leading into the distributor upon the orientation of the particular distributor unit then proceeds further into the select unit and enters the top half of the starting air wall. The starting air wall thereby getting activated is then responsible for allowing the main 30 bar air to proceed further from the manifold through the line through the starting air wall into the unit and thereby give the unit a starting air kick. This is how the active starting air system of main engine works. What's important to see here is the slow turning wall that we have mentioned separately. 
In MAN BMW engines, it has been seen that a separate system when the engine has been standby for 30 minutes or more is provided so as to make sure that no untoward incidents such as hydraulic locking occur into the system. For that purpose, a smaller line along with the slow turning wall is being provided so that when that particular time limit has been exceeded, the air goes through the same system and turns the engine slowly at a particular rate so as to make sure that the engine is not on standstill for longer periods if there is no starting signal being received from the bridge. In the same starting air system, a few safeties will also be inculcated depending upon the manufacturer of the engine and the size and the dimensions of the engine. The safeties of the starting air system will be covered later on in a separate lecture to emphasize on their importance. I hope that this lecture helps you in understanding the basic working of a starting air system. While the intricacies of system may vary as per the maker's requirements and specifications, the basic construction as we have explained remains the same. Please make sure that you like and subscribe our channel Ocean Cadence and we would like to keep creating such creative 